health put in place. How have the Ministry of Health protocol impacted on the travel and the tourism industry supply? First of all, I want to congratulate the Ministry of Health because they have done a beautiful, a beautiful work in terms of protocol, as well as, as those protocols have now saved uh, a lot of lives. Uh, we are compliant to the protocols and we make sure that these protocols are being followed. These protocols also are universal and we got uh, endorsement by WTTC on the safe travel protocols. So they are very effective and will continue with these protocols even after the vaccinations. Right, and so we'd like to know also how will the measures taken by the government support them because so many industry players have been seeing that some of the protocols that have been put by the government in terms of, uh, you know, the measures that are supposed to be put in, you know, taken, um, be observed rather by the industry players and including the tourists has been somehow a challenge. No, actually uh, the protocols are very clear. First is about uh, masks, wearing of masks is important washing hands and uh, thermal checking uh, of fever. So, so that is uh, crucial uh, for entry of any hospitality facility, as well as when travelers come into the country, as far as you have a PCR negative certificate, that is good enough. Mm -hmm. This uh, vaccination is uh, very hopeful, uh, and in due course, we will accept vaccinations as well into the country, vaccination certificates into the country. Right. In fact, I was about to ask you about vaccination because, you know, some of the groups that the government has termed as the critical um, the f groups that should take the COVID-19 uh, vaccine, you're talking about the uh, health workers, uh, the um, uh, teachers, uh, security officers, learners and people with underlying conditions. How, what is the plan for the tourism sector because they interact with tourists, both local and international tourists? Already we have, uh, we, have, we have a plan very clear uh, and uh, first is uh, the frontline workers which is uh, health uh, workers as well the elderly, the underlying condition, those are number one, then teachers and security officers are number two and the hospitality workers are number three because uh, hospitality uh, uh, workers are also interacting on food, on interaction with people and it's better to, to, to give them the vaccine so we, we stop the spread of the virus. All right, and we've seen several countries globally, you know, still putting that ban on international travel. So then one would wonder how long it will take the international tourism to resume travel. I believe by summer, which is June, July, uh, the world will start opening up slowly and gradually. Uh, we expect international tourism to resume end of 2022. Right, and as we talk about resuming, in, um, you're talking about end of 2022. So what are the figures like, the figures currently as we speak for the international tourists? At the moment, uh, they are as good as nil. Very few people come into the country, international visitors, uh, for tourism. Uh, that's why we don't have uh, the numbers. The numbers are not exciting. Uh, I hope, I hope summer, uh, when the world opens up, we'll get uh, a much better projection of how many people will be coming in the future. Mm -hmm. And you know, for several years, um, you know, Kenya has been relying on foreign tourists. But then what impact will the international um, uh, travel restrictions have on an unemployment actually in the sector, especially for women, because you know women are, the, are, are have been employed within the tourism sector in this country. A large percentage of them are women. You know, form half, and they form half of the labour force within the travel and the tourism sector. Well, women play a major role in tourism as well, and 50% of the labour labour sector uh, la la labour is women. Uh, so definitely uh, we, we sympathize with that situation. March, is the, this month is the month of women. We want to actually uh, be proud that women are in the forefront in tourism as well. And we will, we will continue to encourage women, both in the hospitality industry but also in the conservation sector. We now even have women rangers uh, across the con community conservancies. We have women rangers uh, in, in, in KWS. So this is uh, an encouragement to have more women participating in the hospitality, conservation and travel sector. Mm -hmm.
And Waziri, as we bring this conversation to an end, I wouldn't like to end this conversation without asking you this important question that caused a lot of uproar on social media. I know your preview to the sort of discussion that was on social media. And there is a concern by Kenyans on how the government is promoting, you know, the country's tourism globally. And that is by using international personalities to promote um, the country's tourism globally in terms of ignoring, you know, Kenyans giving them that opportunity to do that with the latest um, you know scenario being that of Naomi Campbell and Lupita Nyong'o uh, Brenda we started uh, appointing tourism ambassadors by appointing Eliud Kipchoge as our athlete legend in sports yeah and also and then we approached uh, Naomi Campbell as international uh, brand ambassador or tourism ambassador for Kenya uh, in terms of uh, international celebrity. We are open to many others who will be interested, and I'm glad Naomi Campbell has done this for free because of her love for Kenya. And, uh, and also, we want to encourage much more. Unfortunately, Lupita, we could not access her in terms of complications of, uh, of how do we engage her, how much is going to cost to bring her on board, uh, so those are the things that we are ready to engage with her team and then we, we are ready to appoint her as well. Uh, but definitely we, are don't, we don't discriminate who we appoint and who we don't appoint. We are open both for local celebrities and also international celebrities. All right, thank you so much for clearing the air about that. Once again, Asante Sana, uh, Tourism Cabinet Secretary Najib Balala, for talking to us here on KTN News Centre. Just paint for us a picture of how the travel and the tourism sector was affected and the way forward and how the government is trying to help that sector just to, you know, just to boost it. But then, as we focus on the state of economy, the effect that the virus has had on the economy, Hezron Kimari is speaking to residents in Taita Taveta.